Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a little project using this Max 3105 oximeter sensor and an OLED screen to make a pulse monitor and also a saturation monitor for our blood. The way it works, we can place the finger on the sensor and it will start measuring and after a while it will start to display the bits per minute and also the oxygen saturation in our blood and currently it's saying that my pulse is around 80 something bits per minute which is around correct we can verify that later with my smart band and the saturation goes from around 80 to around 90 which again is a bit low but I had different uh, values reading from the sensor and we'll talk for them a bit later. The Max 30105 sensor is an interesting little device which is primarily used for smoke detection as it has an optical sensor in the front but because it's really sensitive we can also uh, monitor the changes in the color of the finger with, uh, with infrared so when the finger is placed on top of it, it monitors the changes and fluctuations in light. And that's how it calculates the bits uh, per minute and also how we calculate the saturation. It comes with a red, infrared and green LEDs for different measurements. And it can be also used with applications where we need to measure particles in air. So that's an interesting application, but we will not see that today. It's connected to the microcontroller via I2C together with the OLED. So both of them connect to the same pins, uh, D1 and D2 on the ESP8266. And they are powered, the OLED is powered from 3.3 volts and the MAX sensor is powered from 5 volts just for a better stability but it can also be powered from 3.3 and it will also work and before we dive any deeper into how the device operates and how the code runs on it i want to thank today's sponsor which is pcbway specializing in prototyping and small volume production pcbway's pcb assembly services make developing your project easy and hassle-free they handle it all whether it's smt bga or true hall assembly with state-of-the-art equipment like Fuji pick-and-place machines and 3D X-ray, quality and precision are what PCBWay delivers. And they like to keep things flexible. Choose from leaded and lead-free option, plus no minimum start as low as 5 pieces because they believe in giving you exactly what you need. Their expert team works around the clock, ensuring you get the best quality and quickest lead times. PCBWay is not just a provider. They're your PCB and custom manufacturing partner, ensuring your project exceeds expectations. Visit pcbway.com from the link below and get a welcome bonus to try them out. Now it's a bit tricky to compare the results of the sensor here with my uh, Mi Smart Band, but I'll try to do it and trigger the heart rate measuring on both at the same time to see how they compare to each other. So ours measures around 85 bits per minute, now 70 something, so and same is around on the Mi Band. So that settles at around 84. And yeah, so the, the version that we did is around 80 to 85, 84. So it's more or less counting the, the same. It really depends on the pressure that you apply with the finger. So it's best if the sensor is tied to the finger with a rubber band or something, because if I try to and like apply different pressure, then I can really trick the uh, results and skew it to go really really high because it will detect a much more fluctuations but if we hold it nice and steady then uh, we come to a round number and although the the beats per minute works as expected more, more or less i had really 
troubles figuring out the oxygen saturation so maybe i'm doing something wrong and if you have any experience or if you have any idea how the sensor works then be sure to leave them down in the comments on how we can uh, improve that if there is a way but uh, also it really depends on who is the measuring subject because when i measured the saturation and the pulse of uh, my kid and my wife then i got different results and their saturation was really close to 90 ish to 100 uh, percent which is to be expected but when i measure it on my fingers where the skin is much thicker uh, then um, i get really mixed results and it really depends on uh, what finger i'm actually measuring like from the middle up to the uh, to the pinky i usually get better results than on my uh, pointer finger yeah sometimes it goes really low uh, but it's usually around the 70 percent mark the sensor can also detect the presence of the finger so you can see on the oled as soon as i place my finger uh, the text changes to please wait that indicates that we've started measuring and then once it acquires a value it starts displaying the measured values onto the screen at the beginning i have a small line uh, saying the channel name then with a slightly higher font i'm displaying the bits per minute and the saturation percentage labels and below that i have the values where bpms is first and then the saturation is uh, second and that changes and this lower portion of the screen is refreshed each time that we have new value and we can now jump into the code to show you how the whole thing works and here is the arduino code that runs on the device i'm using the max 3010x sensor library by daniel weiss i'm I hope I am saying that right. I also tried the SparkFun library, but with it I had troubles because all of the measurements were always like doubled or tripled. So I'm not sure what was the issue there, but then I moved to the other library and we see it included here. And with that, I really had the consistent and good results. So at the beginning, we're defining the libraries additionally, I'm using the Adafruit SDS 1306 library for the OLED screen. And this is uh, some file that comes with the library that uh, includes some of the filter functions to average out the values of the sensor. And here we are just initiating both of the devices. So the display and also the Max 3105 sensors with their um, values and some variables for the threshold and also for the averaging then we initiate the serial communication with the board so we can monitor down here separately from the screen what we have on the display and this is useful for debugging and then we are trying to figure out if we can communicate with both the display and the sensor and if we are not then we are just looping forever we're stopping execution and looping forever with a message that the allocation and the sensor failed then if everything goes right and we have communication with both the sensor and the display then we are clearing out everything that's on the display and i have a function that initially draws the taste the code name and the labels for the values on top we can jump to it to see that so we are setting a different the small text size and displaying taste the code with some spaces in the front to center it on screen then a blank line below it and then we are displaying the labels with the slightly higher font so they are more prominent if we go back we see here that we have some functions uh, and some variables for the filtering and also we have some calibration values for the sensor based on the documentation here however i just left the defaults because i don't have another oximeter to compare to and to modify these variables we'll see them down in uh, one of the equations that are used and there is on this link here there is a full explanation how you can adjust those based on your sensor if you want to and then in the loop function, we're reading the samples and figuring out if we have a finger detected. If not, 
we are just resetting every everything and start from the beginning if we do have a finger detected then i'm using the display measured values function to show the uh, the information on screen and depending on the whether we have a finger and what the values are for the uh, bits per minute and the saturation then i display the, the different information like saying that there is no finger detected or that we should wait and finally displaying the right information for the bits and the saturation now let's go back here we have the process of reading the values from the sensor and measuring the heartbeat and the saturation this is basically used uh, from the example sketch of the library without any any modification and this is the equation that i said where the different coefficients are um, adjusted and can be adjusted as i said i left everything to the default because i don't really have a way to figure out the calibration and after the measurement is done depending if we are into averaging or just regular measuring i'm using averaging mostly on the screen i'm just displaying the values now with uh, what we have calculated and that's basically it whenever we don't have a finger detected then we are just returning to the initial state and wait for further instructions I'll have the full code available in the website article on my website that uh, you can find in the link in the video description. So if you want to replicate the project, please go at the website and you can get the full code there and use it on your project. Now, my original idea with the project was to have this connected in some way to Home Assistant uh, because, you know, I'm doing this smart home projects, but because the sensor was so janky and really easy to trick out with the uh, bits per minute especially with just moving differently i kind of gave up on the idea because it wasn't really reliable but what i wanted to do is to have it connected to home assistant and maybe use it to give allowance to the kids to have additional screen time if they for example went out and run to raise their bits uh, heart rate a bit and then they can measure the the heart rate and base get additional screen time on that but that's just an idea uh, if you think that it might be interesting then let me know down in the comments if you have any further ideas on what we can do uh, with this sensor in terms of home automation let me know down in the comments and i would be happy to explore and with that uh, that was all for today. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, then make sure to like it, subscribe for more projects in the future, and I will see you all in the next one. Cheers!